Hello and welcome in the living rooms or wherever you are. Today I'm gonna do a whole hour. Uh, so if you stick around the whole hour, I will try and make a, a deep house track uh, from scratch. Then you can see my workflow and what I do. I will explain while I go. Uh, I've chosen some sounds already because I think it's very important uh, not having you listen to all kinds of sounds to find the right sounds. So I just have an 808 uh, drum, Ableton drum, uh, stock drum uh, kit. Uh, yep, that's it. And then I have a sub. Sounds like just a regular bass guitar. Then I have, I call it a, a top bass because uh, I, I use Zebra. Uh, and if I open up the, the case, it is actually a bass, but if I turn them down, it's only the click sound with some delays on it. Then I have one chord and uh, it sounds like this. And it's just <clears throat> in Zebra, they have uh, four different oscillators and a noise and some filters and FM. And then they just take uh, the oscillators and tune them to which chord. So I only have to press one note. The then I have a plug sound, just like that is. And then I'm going to hit scale. And right now it's on a C and then a minor. That's it. Then we have a pad. Just like that. And then I have like the sound effects, no, uh, low noise. Sounds like this. With a long reverb, but I'm gonna enhance the reverb as well. So that's the sounds I've chosen right now. So, and there's no effects on uh, my chain down here. Uh, so I'll definitely put that in, uh, but there is some effects on f the uh, synth itself. So, but uh, I'll just start with Whoops, the kick. And just hit, hit uh, accent. So it's the full kick. And just set that to go. And um, my BPM is 100 and 125 up here. I think that fits uh, my uh, deep house uh, genre well. So the first thing is the kick, and then uh, I'll duplicate that and do a red color for that one, just the kick. And then let's have a clap. And you can hear I put in on the clap, I put in the echo. So then it will sound like this. And again, I just put it in here. And then I would um, definitely not do more with this right now. Hit that on another color, maybe orange. Oh, it changed them. We have to change these because I want the kick to be the first one. And now I just changed them. Then I would love to have like a shaker or a maracas. So I'll duplicate, oops, sorry. Duplicate this as well and hit play on that. And then I would um, color that another color so I know which one is what. And then <clears throat> I would just uh, use this uh, um, piano roll and then have one like this and just duplicate that T 
just solo uh, the maracas. And then I will actually build this, so I'll turn that up full. And then I'll have two on this side that is turned down a lot. And then I will duplicate this. So now we have kind of a basic rhythm with the maracas. And then I would sit this on. And I could, if I wanted to, I could still duplicate this one more time and over here. And then duplicate it all. Whoops. Here. And then what I would do is actually take a compressor. And now we can solo the uh, maracas and choose the compressor and put on the maracas and side chain that to the kick. Uh, and take the kick with pre effects. So, because right now it's unmuted, oh, here you can see it. And now then I'll side chain that. Then I can control how much it will gain redux, reduce, sorry. So it gets a, a little more feeling to it. And now we can hear it. I'll turn it up a little bit. Like that. And then duplicate this one more time. Hit another color. And then I'll find like the, the toms. And or the conga, congas. Let's try and have one here and one here. And then I will just try and put one here and let's say mid congas here and one here. I have no clue how it sounds, but I know it's offbeat kind of. Something like that. That's pretty cool. And then I will duplicate this a last time. Hit another color. Let's take that color and hit play. And then I will remove the kick. Something like that. Cool. So the next thing, now I've kind of did, uh, done with the, 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 the drums that I feel like I will do. Maybe I'll change something later, but let's just go with the kick. And then now uh, let's check the sub bass. And right now I'm in minor and a C. That's fine. And then, because that was okay, I'll just hit capture and find the from here and take that and crop clip and hit uh, quantize on my push. Then I would definitely uh, do a little Room, uh, where I change some of the notes. That one. Remove it halfway maybe, and that's one long. This is pretty cool. And I, then I would probably go with a deeper one, like uh, the C here, and then I would uh, stretch it to the next one and then duplicate this. 
and then until here. And let's try and duplicate that and see where that fits. Duplicate that. So these two would con uh, con what do you call it? Uh, interfere with these notes. And then again, I would duplicate this one and see how that oops, would do. That fits, that fits, that fits, and that fits. So there's something, this one should go away, and that one as well. Cool. And then, again, the compressor will make uh, everything fit. So I would take this, side chain it to the kick. And go pretty low with that and change it maybe to instead of the high pass filter on the EQ, take it to, take it to the uh, uh, mid range base so it takes a little more off. So there's room for the kick. So let's try and hear it with this. Too loud. Take it down a little bit. A little bit up. Then the top bass. And then in here as well, I would definitely go for uh, the EQ and see how it's, it looks. Because there's no, I don't need all the top frequencies and I don't need the full bottom. So this is kind of how I would start with this. Then I'll take the top bass, that's not a bass, it's just a clicking sound and I will take the EQ as well and you can see there's some sub in here. I'll definitely go and remove that so it doesn't interfere with the sub bass. And then I would just double click on the clip so I'll get a fresh and then find the C and then just try this see how that sounds. And here. Try the F and uh, B and A. a. And then I'll go into the Zebra and open up for the and let's see if the filter has anything to do with it. to here again and then take this on a A instead and a G. So now actually you hear a, a rhythm in your head but actually if I, I turn on the kick it will change because your ear got used to this so try and listen to this. So now you hear a completely different rhythm. Let's try and have the sub bass on as well. That's nice. Now the chord, the one I, I found. So let's, uh, I've put in an extra uh, return channel with a really long, um, reverb on and it has to be in wet like a hundred percent wet when it's over here and then cranked up so it's a very long reverb and lush full reverb so I can do this uh, two seconds and then if I turn it up well 
So there's this long, crazy sound. Then I, what I would do is actually go into the reverb and put the compressor on here as well and sidechain that to the kick. And go here and again just pull it down a little bit, maybe to here. So now I can try and listen to uh, the chord again with, I'll take the bass and the top bass out and just a kick. Here the reverb bounces. So I would even do it more and take this filter type, try to hear it again. It's pretty nice. And then just double click on it and make this um, two bar long and take the uh, reverb off. That's pretty cool. And hit capture. Busies. And then I'll definitely go in here and take like that. And then I would crop the clip. So now here I would uh, go into the um, automation and turn on the, uh, the, the C return track. And then open up probably the last bit of this, uh, not the beginning, just the end. And why? Because li try and listen to it when we get the, the end of that. So look, you can now hear that it will just get the tail, the, the dark one. If I took the first one and open it up from here instead, now it will be a completely different sound. So if I have it here, let's just have that calm down. And now it's a lot more darker, the, the effect, because it's only the tail of the sound we get from the reverb. Just have that and then I would probably take the first the whole thing here and then close it off so we just get a, a little bit of it so we get this feeling that it's alive even though it's very dry and what we can do is take and hit B that's our just echo here. And just take the whole line up a little bit. And take that down where this is. And let's listen to it with the bass. Three, two, one, go. So now you can hear it, it's actually too loud. So I'm gonna push it down. Cool. Cease. And then the plug sound, I, I, I think in my head, it would be nice to have something like an epitchator, but I would like to control the epitchator. So I don't use a, a epitchator, I use the, um, the um, piano roll as the sequencer 
and then I would just say down here, put scale on C minor, and then find the C I want. It will light up as red. And then I would actually just hit steps up in that scale. Let's try and hear this in solo. That's nice. And then just duplicate this. I don't know how it sounds, but then three tones, but then the last two, I would love to try and go higher. Maybe this one down. Oh, that's cool. We could also try and get this one higher up here. And then I'll go into the zebra and maybe turn down the decay and release up. And try and open up the cutoff. I actually liked it the better the first time I did it, so I'm just going back. Now I need to go in here and turn down the decay again. Maybe take this an octave higher. So shift and arrow up. And now I can try and uh, put in some of the, the reverb on this as well. And then I'm just going to duplicate it so it ha it's a, a four bar loop. And then have maybe the last tone here. Go with the long reverb. Let's figure out that. Let's hear it. And now it'll come. But now you can actually hear that it took the, the note. So I'm gonna take this off the note. Here we go. And then just take the end of it instead. A little too lit, little of it. Maybe some more. more. That was better. And now I'm, I'm getting pretty annoyed with this. So I'm, I think I'm gonna put the first one on D. The next one I'll shift up to an E. And then I'll shift up to an F. And the last one to G. And it turns up. That's much better. And again, then we can take the compressor, set it to sidechain. And the kick. It's kind of out of running. Let's hear it. And then on the zebra, I would definitely open up the filter. Well, we'll come to that later. It's going okay. This is soon the first half hour. It's going, it's going quickly. Uh, and then let's just try, let's find an, uh, a chord that will fit with the pad. Yeah, definitely here. 
double click it and then I would uh, take the scale off and duplicate this two times and have that quite at the beginning of the the loop so maybe halfway here one down here and I'll just fold it so I can see everything and let me make them a little longer something like this and let's try and hear it a little longer a little longer maybe through here and then crank the reverb up again for this long lush reverb I'll definitely have it longer, like here, and then I would duplicate it and remove these, so I have it on eight. And then I'll take the last one, because I actually can remember this sound, and have it, I'll duplicate this over here, and then I would remove this. So we know this is in the beginning, so we need to have something here. So maybe just one longer one here, and remove these and have this on our orange as well just assign track color to clip a lot longer Take this one octave down, so it's even lower. You hear the white noise of it, so now it's too loud. And take it up one octave again. Okay, so now I'll go in and check here. We have an EQ, but also check the chords on these. So check the EQ8. So now I need kind of a, uh, another EQ, a dynamic EQ. So I'm gonna take the, the Q3 because that's a dynamic EQ. So why would I do that? So now you can hear this. It has a lot of mix in the middle that I want to tame. I'll just first double click here and make so there's no mod down here. Then I would tame this by double clicking it and the auto rim here just take it down a little bit. So it will bounce that back and take the Q up. And then rise it a little bit. Let's see, I don't want the treble on this, so I'll just have it like that. So now it's working for me. So we'll put it back where, where it should be. So when it's quiet, it will bounce it up. When it's loudest, it will smush it down again. Then let's have a look on this. And again, We'll take this and take the mud away. Make it a little steeper. This is actually okay. Open it up again. Q3. 
Cool. This one, remove the mud. And this one needs the the, um, the compressor and side chain that to the kick. Oops. Go up here. Just so we get movement on the sound as well, not only if we take that way, you can hear it. So now this sound will get the the compressor as well. Or the side chaining. And I'll just copy it to that sound as well. So now we can hear that sound and then we need an EQ. And wait for it. I will come, I can right away take some of the low end off. And that's fine like that. And then I'll listen to it again. So how would I approach this to get into the arrangement view? I would actually pull this way down because now I'm gonna find the one that my intro should be like. I like this sound as an intro. Maybe with this on. So, and now you can actually see down in the bottom here that where the sound will come. So this could be a good intro. We could also take the this one and to duplicate that and give another color let's try that color double kick in here and just have all the uh, bongos and stuff so it's only the this maybe have this as an intro especially if you're DJing you have a kind of a rhythm to to start with so what I would do is I would actually go in here Let's make this smaller and say, okay, I would love to have that coming number two. And this one at number one, I'm just duplicating it, them. So when I push this one, it will start like that. So this is our intro and then I will duplicate these two and this one as well. So one, two, one, two, three. And that's the next part of it. And then maybe I could have this one do some rhythm with this. Let's hear it. So then I'm just building the track up in here instead of in arrangement view. Okay, so now let's just have the maracas go and then we'll have the kick, bass and the middle bass. And let's uh, try and hear that. So this is kind of a break. And then the, the drums. And then I'll have this again and take these two tracks and go down. Just very clean. We can also have the, the clap on this. And then the maracas will come in again. Just take the sub out and maybe the pad in here.
like a middle play or something, and then have the full track going. Let me see if that's, oh, that's the one. Maybe the, the pink one should be like a middle part. that and then the full thing will come so why would I build it up like that because now I can actually just go over to my push hit the session view and now I have the full arrangement down here and hit this one to begin with double stop up here and remove the the loop function and just hit record. So this is our kind of an intro we have now. Let's have it going two times and then the next one. One, two, three, four. Can also stop the markers. Stop the kick. And then go walk to one octave down, and then we can see the last line. And then now I can look at this and say, okay, next one, I don't want the kick, I just want the pads and this one. Shit, what happened here? and hit it again. So what, ha what ha has happened is now I can flip side in here and you can actually see that everything is here. Then we just need the outro. Stop these four. One, two, three, four. Well, didn't go. Something happens. Why is the button not working? So now we can go in here and look. Three minutes and 20 seconds. It's okay. Uh, and then we can rearrange whenever we want to. Uh, but now I've actually built the track. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. 
Nothing here. Nothing here. There's something. Then I will go into my sample library. Uh, vengeance, it could be, and effects. Vengeance. And find an uplifter. Just Maybe that one or two. Ugh. Yeah, this is here we go. What I spared you for before. Um, so I'll just put it in here and have it uh, stop these before. And then I would hit shift and just drag this out. So it's a long. I don't know how it will sound when I stretch it that much, but it has to be on complex. Otherwise, you can see if it's on beats, it will kind of sound like this. Uh, instead of uh, complex pro. And then I'll have this short uh, reverb on to the end here. And open up for it. And then I would definitely want to take, put this on. So I actually need it just like that, then it will sound better. Maybe find another one that's longer. Mm, let's go try the bottom one, no. Sweep long. I'll try and put that in instead because I thought the other one sounded kind of bad. And then take a the EQ. Down, have a break here at the end, just not having a kick. And then probably I'm gonna take a, instead of a down sweep, I would definitely take a down lifter instead. Something like that. And put in down here. And then make this shorter. this, like recycle them. Then put this one underneath. And then just recycle them.
Nice. Just take that every time something drops down. So about here, and let's take... I could have taken a lot of others, but let's just do this. Again, one here, even though this is going, I'll definitely... Let's see, one, two, three, four. Take this off here. Cut them off here. Maybe have this here. So actually now it won't fit my constellation. So here we have to like cut this to here and take this and say one, two, one, two, three, four. So let's duplicate this and then maybe take this off and this off and Let's see, one, two, three, four. These should go away as well. There we go, and the pad here, take that off. And maybe the last one as well. So, this is how I would build a track, kinda. Uh, and right now, I would definitely go in and edit even further and further and further, add some more stuff, but this is the base of the track. So let's just hear the full track. There we go.
So this is how I would approach, this is my bass, then I would definitely evolve on this track. There is some mistakes here, if you see, there's four here, four here, but then there's a two uh, bar, then I would definitely go like this, push this here, and take these two and squish them over here, and take that here. So now they fit, so one, two, and then three. Sometimes four is the magic number. I would definitely do something with the intro. And then we have one, two, three here, and one down break. That's okay, because we have one in the down break. Then we have one and a half. That would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And yeah. This should be arranged a little bit different. It would be a little longer, the track. Um, you can see I would do this. I still got a little minute, some minutes to go. So I would drag this here. And then I would cut this here. About here. and then cut that, or take that here. Now it would fit a lot better with a track. And now we're up at over four minutes of a track in one hour. Uh, but I kind of cheated because I picked the sound before. That's a big, it's a big thing to, to be I would evolve the track with the sounds I will find. So now it's kind of, in my head, it's what it should sound like, but normally I would choose the sound while I was going with it. But yeah, one hour and we got kind of a full track. Um, and there's definitely some mixing and mastering that I will start on, do some more. I would probably not use these sweeps. I would find some better ones. Um, otherwise, yeah, this is how I approach uh, Deep House. So thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, wanted to listen to me. Is there any questions? No? Perfect. Cool. See you soon.